Hello, my name is Christina Carpenter, and today I'm going to demonstrate for you how you can make your own custom buttons for Canvas for your syllabus page. Um, my example is right here. I've got a hexagon shaped um, button that's in resource and content tools. I have previously made rectangular buttons, but I think I've changed my mind for the top. I think I want um, something with a custom shape. So I'm going to show you how you can do that with Google Draw. And I'm also going to show you how you can find free images on the internet um, and free patterns for your backgrounds. And we're going to talk about the um, importance of following copyright laws and how we can fit those into a custom shape as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is you're going to go to your Google Drive. And in your Google Drive, and you can see here I've already worked on my button, but I'm going to go to New and Google Drawings. And at first it shows a pretty um, large canvas. We're going to give it a title. So we'll just say Canvas Button. Or I can say button and dash. What is the other one I need? I need one for YouTube. So we'll call this YouTube. And this image is, let's look to see how big it is. Let's see, let's say it's gonna be 80 by 80. Um, there we go, that'll work. So what we'll do is going back to our drawing, we'll go to File, Page Setup, and right now it gives you the option of standard four to three, but you can actually choose a custom size for your drawing, and you can change it from inches to pixels. That is the standard um, unit for the internet or for using something uh, dimensional like that or virtual. So we can change it to, we'll, we'll do 80 by 90 pixels. And that gives us plenty of room. This uh, gray and white squares is an indication that it is a clear background. Another way you can trim your canvas is to um, click down here at the bottom and you can drag it in or out. So, okay. From here, we're going to go to Shapes, the Shape tool. You've got a multitude of different shapes that you can use. Um, different stars, different callouts. If you really want to get fun with math, you've got that stuff. Uh, just a multitude of different things. You could even do like a shape, a circle. If you want a real circle instead of an oval, this will make an oval. If you press and hold the shift button, so it'll make your circle perfectly round. And we're going to drag that all the way out. Maybe a little bit more. Because we're going to eliminate as much of the background as possible. Okay, from here um, you've got a stroke color and a fill color. The stroke is the outside, the interior is the fill. And these can be changed up here right at the top once the item is selected. Notice it goes away when I don't have my circle selected. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to do, I used a dark gray. And you can actually turn off the stroke um, if you want. If you want to make it you can make it spotted, you know, if you really want to do something fun like that. You can make it with spots, or you can do, you may not be able to see it as well. Well, actually, you can see it fairly well, but you can do white. Okay, next thing. So to make the button, or to make your label, you can use the text box. I do not recommend turning your shape into a text box, because um, that will limit you on where you can place your text. Uh, you can also use word art if you go to insert word art. Normally it's working, but for some reason today it's not. Uh, so we're going to go to text box and I'm going to click and drag out plenty of space to type my term. 
This is going to be for YouTube. And if you hit Command A, we'll select all of your text. At that point, then I can adjust my font and my size and even my color. So if you want it to be, you know, magenta with a white highlight or magenta highlight with white text, you can do that. So, um, but I'm going to go turn off my highlight. So, um, you've got that. You can also change your font to a variety of different fonts. I would just use the same font for each of your, uh, use the same font and use the same shape for the background of each of your buttons. So, uh, unless you've got a, a consistent theme going on. Another thing you can do is you can adjust your alignment. So if you want to make sure it's in the center, you can change this to center alignment and change it to the center of the text box. Sometimes that helps in these little red lines that pop up. These are called guides. And so, like, I want to make sure it's square in the middle of my circle. So there we go. All right. Now my button is complete. So in order to make it for my page... Um, to get it to my canvas, all I need to do is download as. You can download as a JPEG, but a PNG will make this image have the clear background. So it'll it'll make sure your background is still clear. So then we've downloaded it. It's going to pop up down here in the bottom of your Chrome. Now we can go back to our canvas. And if we go to files, remember we have to upload our images to files first. And I'm going to go to Upload. And mine's in my recent downloads. Right there. Then I can go back to my syllabus page. Edit my page. And if I don't like my, cur my current button, I can erase that. Insert an image. Go to my canvas. The course files. And there is my YouTube button. It gives you dimensions. Um, you can specify the dimensions if you want. Like this looks a little large, so I'm going to take it down. It's so 80 by 80. I like that a lot and I've got this in a table and I'm really not crazy about how much space is between each of these so I can take that down now and there is now to make it a button you need to select the image and uh, put your link to your URL here so for example if I wanted to make it to now obviously this is to YouTube so, um, but you would need to copy your YouTube and insert your link. And then it will um, click insert link. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you is how to take um, a graphic or like an image and add it as a pattern background. And obviously we would change that text to a different color. But we're going to go back over here and I'm going to show you what to do now. Um, first things first is you need to find your image. Make sure that you are either that you're using images that are free from copyright. So you can't go to Shutterstock and just copy this image because for one, it's got the watermark on it, and two, that is violating copyright laws. So make sure you're definitely conscious of that. Do not go to Google and just pull an image randomly off of Google. That is one thing that you know that we need to make sure and um, abide by because that's something that we expect out of our students. So if I go to uh, one place um, I found on Pinterest is where I found and I've pinned for a long time is these free um, papers that are chevron backgrounds and um, it has all these different colors. They're actually really large so you can use them for other stuff. So they're 12 by 12 inches at 300 pixels DPI which is really large and you can download it and um, they actually share it from their Google Drive, it looks like. 
and you can download it and I've actually uploaded it to my Google Drive and I'll show that in a second. Another popular thing right now is glitter. Um, so if you go to Google, you can search uh, glitter background or glitter paper. If you go to images, um, for one, do not just click and drag out um, any of your images. If you go to image and um, then go to search tools, we want to go narrow this down by usage rights and we want to labeled for non-commercial reuse because we're not a commercial company. Um, and then any of this you can use in a background. So this is one you might actually be able to use because it's so probably such a large image you would actually probably only need a square of it and so you actually have a bunch of uh, glitter in one image you could probably use and download. Here's another one that's similar and you can always visit the page. This is DeviantArt, so I'm not sure if this is blocked by MISD or not. <clears throat> and where is the, okay, here's the download button for it. It usually gives you details. Some rights reserved under Creative Commons, non-commercial. And sometimes they can tell you whether it's their glitter or not. If you double click on the zip file after it downloads, it will open up and we can show that. Um, <clears throat> another one I found is metallic green glitter on public domain pictures. That's a place where you can go. One place I found that had some glitter tags was Pixabay. And let's see, we found some glitter Christmas tags, I thought. I guess I'm wrong. But we can go back to our scrapbook pages I've downloaded. And they're expanding now. Let's see what kind of file this is. Oh, these are JPEGs. Perfect. So these would be good to use, and you can download these and just upload them to your Google Drive. So <clears throat> back here, so what we need to do is we need to insert an image. So we're going to go to Image, and I can choose whatever I've uploaded to my Google Drive, or I can um, pull them in from, from somewhere else, from my computer. So I'm going to just go ahead and select this. Let's say I want to use this yellow. Okay, at first this has a square shape, but if you go to the crop button and to mask image, you can actually choose different shapes. So automatically it chooses, you know, it'll do a perfect circle. And if I go to control and click on this and go to order, we're going to send backward. Notice our YouTube does not show up anymore, so you will need to change your... That was not what I wanted to do. We'll need to change your text color. Um, one thing I realized I didn't do earlier is I did not do my line like I've been doing. So if you press and hold shift and drag across, it will create your line for you in a straight line. Then all I have to do is copy and paste. That way we know those are centered. That looks pretty good. And we need to fix our circle here. There we go. And so really you can you can mask this into whatever shape you want um, as far as what all the shapes they have. They've got, if you want to do triangles, if you want to do rectangles, if you want to do 
my smiley face, you can even do that. So, um, there's a lot of different ideas, um, a lot of different potential you can use for your buttons. So I hope this will help you out a little bit. Um, if you need to, you can email me. The link is in the bottom. And good luck as you create your Canvas syllabus.